Why is my skin changing so much now that I'm in my 30s and 40s? Whether it be dry patches, acne breakouts, sweating buckets, and oh my gosh, wrinkles that seem to have cropped up overnight. You're not imagining things. The fact of the matter is hormones are shifting around and it's impacting your skin. If this sounds like you, you're in luck. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And in today's video, I'm going to break down how it is that our hormones change as we get up there in years and how that can lead to different skin changes that you might be experiencing. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to be giving you some practical tips and tricks for how to manage many of these changes at home with simple interventions. So first of all, what exactly are the hormonal changes going on in our 30s and 40s? Well, for women around the age of perimenopause and into menopause, we start to experience a decline in estrogen as well as the hormone progesterone. Perimenopause can begin as early as your mid to late 30s. The hormone testosterone might actually become more dominant even if testosterone levels don't rise. And this is simply due to the fact that estrogen is declining and has less of an impact overall at this stage in life. On top of that, you have cortisol, the stress hormone, which can be something that is chronically elevated in mid to later life as we are just dealing with all sorts of stressors, caregiving, childcare, work, social obligations. Just being an adult in 2025 is enough to keep the cortisol sky high. All of these shifts affect your skin. They influence how much oil your skin makes, how much sweat your body produces, how well your skin retains moisture. These changes also influence how quickly collagen breaks down and is repaired in the skin. They can even impact how your skin responds to that fireball in the sky that is emitting ultraviolet radiation. So let's break down what this actually looks like on your face, on your body. First of all, you might start experiencing what is commonly referred to as hormonal acne. Now, I've said this before and it's important to reiterate, all acne is influenced by hormones, but acne that women experience in their adult years tends to be predominantly driven by hormones as the hormonal profiles shift around. So if you suddenly start breaking out, maybe for the first time, or you've got acne that you once had and thought you were done with, now it's resurfacing, especially with painful cystic breakouts along the jawline, this likely is related to hormonal changes. Specifically, it's tied to the increased action, if you will, of testosterone unopposed by the estrogens, as well as elevated levels of cortisol, which influence sebum production, oil production, a major driver of acne. So you may notice that acne breakouts flow up around the time of the menstrual cycle, which in perimenopause can become irregular. And of course, you may get flare ups during particularly intense bouts of psychological, emotional or physical stress. Another interesting change to our skin is the sudden appearance out of nowhere of dryness and sensitivity. Like what is going on? Why the heck does my face wash burn and sting all of a sudden? I've been using this for years and years and years. What is going on? As estrogen levels drop, your skin produces fewer oils, fewer ceramides, and the integrity of the barrier starts to decline, making you more likely to lose water from the skin. That's called an increase in transepidermal water loss and allowing things better access into your skin to burn and sting. Your skin barrier gets a little weaker, so products are more likely to suddenly be uncomfortable for you. They may be suddenly harsh, irritating. You might start experiencing flaking, peeling of the skin, persistent Consistent redness, itch, feeling of tightness, dryness. That dry skin also can make your skin look more wrinkled. I call those dehydration wrinkles. There's pigmentation. Hormonal changes can actually trigger a hormonal skin condition called melasma, especially, especially when combined with unprotected sun exposure. This is a condition where you have these larger patches of hyperpigmentation, usually with angular borders, typically on both sides of your face can be on the cheeks, the upper lip, the forehead, even the chest and neck. A lot of women actually experience melasma during pregnancy as it relates to changes in the hormones during pregnancy. And if you're curious about skin changes during pregnancy, you need to check out my pregnancy skincare playlist.
list because it is packed with pregnancy specific as well as breastfeeding specific skincare content. And it's an under tapped resource on my channel. One of the advantages of humans having skin is that it houses eccrine sweat glands that produce sweat, which evaporates to cool the body. It is a brilliant phenomenon. Without sweat production, we overheat. In fact, there are medical conditions where people are born without good sweat glands and they can't really participate in any kind of high intensity sport because they will literally die of heat stroke. But you can have too much of a good thing and when you're sweating buckets all of a sudden, it can further worsen your already dry skin, your skin barrier issues. It can lead to rashes in the skin folds where it collects and further breaks down the skin. Plus it's just an unpleasant, inconvenient thing to have to deal with, to wake up in the middle of the night drenched in sweat or to just seemingly sweat out of nowhere, have sweat stains under your arms. No one wants to deal with that. Some women notice a lot of sweat, especially at night. On the other hand, other people find that they sweat a lot less. As a result, they tend to not tolerate heat as well as they once did. Hormonal shifts not only alter the amount of sweat our body produces, but it actually can change body odor. Most of body odor is related to the breakdown of sweat by bacteria that normally live on our skin. So you might suddenly notice that you have more odor under the arms or in the skin folds. Not only is this related to the hormonal impacts on sweat production itself, but also remember you may be experiencing as it relates again to hormones, changes in skin barrier integrity. And that change in skin barrier integrity can alter the skin microbiome, the bacteria that live on your skin, which normally break down your sweat. You might have now as it relates to a change in barrier integrity and biome constitution, you might now have more bacteria that produce odorific compounds that have changed your body odor. Then of course, everyone at this point knows that as we get older, one of the skin changes that many women experience are wrinkles, loss of collagen, loss of elasticity. Now the majority of deep wrinkles that we develop are caused by our cumulative sun exposure coupled with the repetitive motions that crease the skin over time. Like that is really the mechanics of how deep wrinkles form over time. But for women in perimenopause and menopause, as you get that decline in estrogen, you lose estrogen signaling to the fibroblasts to make more collagen. So in other words, you have a UV, a sun independent loss of collagen leading to wrinkles. Overall, the skin can get thinner in addition to being drier, lose elasticity, snap, and recoil. Areas like the jawline and the cheeks start to lose volume and sag. You may notice the appearance of jowls and just an overall more hollowed appearance under the eye as the cheek descends. So if you've ever felt like you suddenly aged overnight, a lot of that might actually be related to these hormonal shifts with age. But the good news is you can take action to address, remedy, and correct some of these hormonal related impacts on your skin. First of all, for hormonal acne, when it comes to stuff that you can buy over the counter that is an over-the-counter approved acne treatment, the same over-the-counter acne treatments that treat acne that a teenager might get, a tween, yeah, those can still work for hormonally related adult acne in women. That includes benzoyl peroxide, adapalene, which is over-the-counter in the United States, salicylic acid, and sulfur. Yes, these can all help with hormonal acne, again, all acne is hormonal but adult acne in women. But for more stubborn breakouts, see a board certified dermatologist. The problem with sleeping on more intensive acne treatment is that if the acne is not well controlled, it can go on to scar and it can leave behind stubborn hyperpigmentation, which you're already more inclined towards due to the hormonal changes that we mentioned earlier. And it can also heal with persistent redness and that discoloration and redness can take a long time to clear up. Your dermatologist might elect to prescribe spironolactone, a medication that targets the hormonal aspect specifically of adult acne. Or they might prescribe the topical medication that goes by the brand name Winlevy, Clascoterone, which addresses the hormonal aspects of things. And you just put that on the skin. It's not something you take by mouth. Now I have videos on my channel about each of these medications.
medications. So check those videos out if you want to know the nuance, the details, the side effects. We cover it all in those videos. Some women may even be candidates for hormonal contraceptive pills, which will address some of the hormonal components of acne as well. There's also a newer acne treatment laser called Avaclear. Again, I have a video on that, how it works, what you might expect with it. But let's not forget about our lifestyle factors, how they influence our skin. Make sure you are watching your diet. Diets high in refined sugary carbohydrates that pack a high glycemic load, they can lead to more uh, sebum production, more stubborn acne. And check out some of my videos on diet and acne. I break it down there further. When it comes to dryness and in a sudden onset of skin sensitivity that seems to have appeared out of nowhere, you may not need to completely revamp your skincare routine or reinvent the wheel, but you probably want to do some things a little bit differently. First of all, make sure that when you wash your face, you wash your skin, you bathe, you're not using really hot water. You're not staying in the shower in hot water too long. That further dries out the skin and enhances sensitivity. You might elect to choose fragrance-free skincare products because again, the skin does become more sensitive as you uh, go through these changes and fragrance can be more likely to burn and sting just because of how some of the fragrance compounds act on the skin. They can make redness come out and enhance sensitivity. Use gentle hydrating cleansers. Consider washing your face just once a day at nighttime. Now, if you have oily skin, you might want to do twice a day cleansing. But for those of you dealing with dryness and sensitivity, consider just washing your face once at the end of the day. Make sure you are leaning into moisturizers and look for moisturizers with barrier supporting ingredients like ceramides and niacinamide, a topical antioxidant that can also help your skin not only repair the barrier more efficiently, but also can help ward off oxidative stress due to those environmental aggressors. You might choose to step back from the aggressive exfoliation, glycolic acid, maybe too harsh at this point, it may be unnecessary and not helping you. That's not the case for everyone, but it's definitely worth taking a look at if you find that your skin is just overly sensitive, overly dry. For pigmentation and melasma, daily sunscreen is a must, but I suggest choosing a sunscreen that is tinted because when it comes to melasma and hyperpigmentation, especially if you have a deeper skin tone, not only do you need the sunscreen to protect you from ultraviolet radiation that aggravates the pigmentation, but the tint in tinted sunscreens can protect from blue light that comes from the sun that also can aggravate and drive stubborn hyperpigmentation independent of the UV coming from the sun. So those two in one sun protective formulation can be really helpful for fading hyperpigmentation and melasma. There are a variety of skin lightening ingredients that can help fade stubborn hyperpigmentation. These include niacinamide, one of my favorites, as well as azelaic acid, cystamine, and ascorbic acid provided it's formulated correctly. Also your topical retinoids, if tolerated, can also be a game changer in fading stubborn hyperpigmentation. Discuss with your dermatologist because there are in-office treatments like chemical peels that may be more appropriate for tackling stubborn hyperpigmentation. Now for sweat and odor, make sure you're using antiperspirants and you're using them correctly. To use an antiperspirant correctly, apply it at nighttime, not in the morning. Apply it at night. It works better when applied at night than when applied the following morning. The following morning when you wake up, if you take a shower, no worries, you're free to wash it off because it has made its way down into the sweat gland as you slept and anything on the surface of the skin may just be more irritating to you. You might want to look for an antiperspirant that is fragrance free. Again, fragrance is more likely to be irritating as you go through these changes in skin barrier integrity. Antiperspirants help to reduce sweat output. If you have a lot of hair under your arms, choose a antiperspirant gel because they go into hair bearing areas more easily and they'll have a better likelihood of depositing the antiperspirant ingredient on the surface of the skin so it can make its way down into the sweat gland and not gum up all on your underarm hair. Dermatologists can offer a variety of in-office treatments as well as prescriptions that can also help to reduce sweat like oxybutynin, glycopyrrolate, and Botox injections. If your skin feels dry because you're sweating less and you have dry skin as it relates to hormonal changes, look for moisturizers with urea and glycerin. They're very hydrating. Now for wrinkles and collagen loss, retinoid is going to be your best friend. Long-term consistent use of a topical retinoid can improve collagen production in the skin and diminish the appearance
signs of wrinkles and other age-related changes in the skin. Prescription retinoids are the most evidence-based. That also includes over-the-counter adapalene, which, yeah, that's the acne treatment. So if you're using that to treat your acne that you have developed as an adult, it's going to be helpful as well for improving collagen production so long as you use it. But there's also cosmetic retinol, OL, and retinaldehyde. These also, with long-term consistent use, can improve collagen production, and they just take a little bit longer to start working compared to the prescription strengths, and they often are less irritating. There's also at-home photobiomodulation with red and near-infrared wavelengths of light, such as a LED face mask. Disclaimer, I am affiliated with the company Omnilox. I personally use and recommend for wrinkle improvement the Omnilox contour mask. It has red and near-infrared light in it to help improve collagen and reduce inflammation. It's been amazing for me personally, and it is an effectively developed mask. But of course, topical skincare and at-home stuff can only do so much, and therefore there are a wide array of in-office cosmetic procedures for improving wrinkles, many of which I have covered already on my channel, such as microneedling, resurfacing lasers. They really can help when used appropriately. But I want to emphasize that this isn't something that you have to or necessarily should go through on your own and try and just fix it yourself. In many cases, it would be in your best interest to see a board certified dermatologist. For example, if you're dealing with really stubborn cystic inflammatory acne that will not back down with over the counter topical medications, you want to see a board certified dermatologist for effective treatments, again, to reduce the risk of scarring as well as stubborn hyperpigmentation and redness. If the sweat has gotten to a point where it is impacting your quality of life, don't try and suck it up. There are great in-office treatments, prescriptions that can help shut that down. Excessive sweat, it can take a toll on your skin and lead to all sorts of secondary skin rashes and problems, aside from just odor and inconvenience. Remember, dermatologists, they're there to help and they have the most experience diagnosing and treating skin disease at any life stage. So yeah, hormones, they definitely impact your skin, especially in your 30s and 40s. Whether it be breakouts, dryness, sweat, pigmentation, you name it, lots of changes going on. But the more you know and the more you understand, the better equipped you'll be to take care of your skin and keep it healthy long term. So I really hope you guys found this video helpful. Now on the end slide, I'm going to link a recent video where I go over my top recommended skincare ingredients for anti-aging that are actually evidence-based, that actually work, okay? Cut through all the noise, all of the fluff, and get to, get to what actually can work. So check that one out next if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye! Mm -hmm.